Today we are talking all about what's going to come in markets, how we're going to see. And last month you urged some of your traders to act in a contrarian way. What does it mean to be contrarian for a $1.3 trillion fund that in some ways is the market? Yeah. Well, um, contrarian, of course, means to try to do the opposite of everybody else. And um, that's where all the money is. I mean, if you are, if you are right in a contrarian way, you will uh, do much, much better. And that's kind of the philosophy we try to install increasingly amongst our traders and our portfolio managers. What does that mean in terms of specifics here? What is sort of the common thought that you would lean against? Well, I thought it was much easier last year to be contrarian because it was it was clear that, you know, with so much negative rates that there was one way they could go. Um, a lot of people selling out of the integrated uh, oil and energy companies, you know, that seemed like a, a good place to be. Um, and um, equity is at a high level. Now I think it's much more difficult to know what contrarian is. Uh, there is uh, less of a clear trend and there is less of a clear positioning in the market. You mentioned energy equities, which did incredibly well, which led the rally that we saw last year. And yet you have a complicated relationship with fossil fuels because it is your mandate not to invest in companies that have big uh, carbon footprints. How have you managed a rally that a lot of people say will continue at a time when that kind of goes against some of your mandate? Well, since the, the, the fund is, is based on, on revenues from oil and gas, the, uh, the parliament decided that we should not invest in pure upstream oil companies. So what, but what we do do is to invest in the integrated energy companies. And I think that's a good place to be. They are, play a very, very important role in the, in the energy transition. And, uh, and so we continue to have big investments there. Have you increased allocations on this wager that they're going to have an even bigger role as people realize that it will take fossil fuels to get to the other side that people think of as a cleaner energy future? Uh, just for the moment, we have, we have pretty e equal weight there. Going forward, a lot of people are talking about a potential downturn in equities. We had Bob Prince of Bridgewater on yesterday talking about a potential 20% decline and an earnings bubble in stocks. Considering that you are such a big investor of public equities globally, how are you playing this? Do you agree with that assessment? Uh, you know, I think it's the first time that I've seen such potentially very different outcomes. I mean, normally I have one strong view here. I think there is a potential that the whole thing could muddle through. And the reason for that is because people are already so cautious. There is so much talk about recession. And typically, uh, you know, the market wants to do one thing. It's to steal your money. And the way it could steal your money now is actually to go up. Having said that, I think the big, big uncertainty this year is what will happen with global inflation when China kicks in. Uh, I think it will be inflationary. And there is a risk that we could see an acceleration of inflation again on the back of that. That would be really bad for markets. Well, what would be the diversification that could help from an investor standpoint in that scenario? Well, so the problem in that kind of scenario, you're not going to make money anywhere. So, um, you know, if that happens, you will lose mon You will probably lose money in the in the bond market. You lose money in the equity market. You lose money in the um, in the real estate market. So do you? I, I just don't think there is any place to hide there. What about cash? I mean, are you increasing some of your cash just to sort of be nimble in a situation like that? No, we don't really. We we uh, it's not really in our mandate to have a lot of cash. We are uh, fully invested. It's kind of a, a fraught moment then, if you think that everything could potentially do very badly. Well, we, you know, we are a very long-term investor. We invest with like a 40 to 100 year time horizon. And so we have to sit through some of this, this volatility. Uh, that's, that's life. A lot of people are talking about a sea change here in terms of the economy globally with the higher inflationary environment. Do you believe that inflation is going to be higher for longer, even after whatever downturn, whatever disruption, whatever inflation <coughs> we might see this year? Well, I, I, I think definitely there is a risk for that, right? So we had, uh, with the global financial crisis, we had the biggest easing the world has seen. Then with COVID, you had the biggest um, stimuli we've ever seen. So you had like a world record on world record. And a lot of that uh, froth has to be taken out. And that's not done in 10 minutes. So, uh, you know, I think this could go on for, uh, for quite some time. And just um, the reversal of the, of the globalization could potentially add, I don't know, um, one percentage point to inflation. You know, it's more expensive to produce close to home. And does that change your 60-40 or 70-30 in your case kind of view in terms of equities and bonds? We are happy with 70-30. Okay, so that's going to stick with it. When that's you talk about the equity allocation, there's a question about where the leadership's going to come from. Is it going to come from big tech as we have seen in the U.S.? Is Apple still going to lead? Well, it has, certainly hasn't led lately. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think it's very difficult to know where uh, 
what's going to lead this going forward. Well, I guess uh, then it, it so raises a question, is it an indexing moment or do you change your index? Do you change the no, concept of an index? We, 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 are, we run close to the index uh, because the fund is so large um, that we have to do that. Uh, so we are not changing. We're not changing the index on the back of this. Okay. So it's sort of uh, whatever happens, it is what it is. So then, how do you affect change from uh, a shareholder perspective, in, and sort of get visibility if you're sort of subject to whatever happens in the global economy? Well, I think that's uh, that's exactly right. We are subject to what's happening in the global economy. There are um, there is not really any place we can we can hide. We have to take the long term hat on and try to buy when other people are selling and and vice versa. With respect to uh, the allocation to less public assets, real estate, some of the private assets, do you think it is a time to increase that just in, in an, as a hedge, or do you think that it's time to decrease that because some of the reckoning hasn't happened in that pocket yet? Well, we have we have a great real estate uh, portfolio with you know big holdings in in London, uh, New York, in many of the main cities around the world. We think it's a great part of the uh, of the portfolio to have, in particular now. Uh, we are big in logistics. Uh, and uh, so we think to be, you know, a big diversified player is, is the right thing to be. So if you say that you basically track the market yeah. and you're subject to the market, then how do you get outperformance? What is it? What does outperformance mean to you at a time of potential losses everywhere? Absolutely. So what we try to do is, of course, to get these excess returns. And since the fund is very large, you only need to tweak a tiny bit to get a big uh, to get potentially big excess returns. And so what we've done over the last few years is to be overweight uh, integrated energy companies. Um, we have had shorter duration, i.e. we've had a portfolio on the bond side which has been less risky to uh, rising interest rates. We've had some underweight equities. Um, we were underweight some of the recent IPOs because we didn't think they were of particularly good quality. So those are the type of things we can do and when you combine all these kind of things you get uh, potentially excess returns. When you talk about the bond portfolio, how are you tweaking it now in terms of long duration or short duration? Are you shifting it around in anticipation of a potential downturn even if inflation in the near run is going to be no, we are not. No, we are not doing that. We are, we are quite uh, close to the, to the index that we have on the bond side. This is your first year at the Davos Conference at the World Economic Forum. Yep. Why did you come this year? We came because we have a very strong message. We think that the boards generally need to sharpen up. We think the boards need to be more on the ball when it comes to the climate. And we will increasingly vote against boards which don't have a particularly uh, you know, credible uh, plan for, uh, for reductions. We are vocal on executive pay. We think in particular in the US, the corporate greed has just gone too far. And um, we are also very strong on, on the increased diversity at board levels. That's the main message we have this year. How receptive are people to that message, particularly on executive pay at Davos? Uh, well, very much so. I do think uh, companies really listen. We had some against votes last year, and following which the companies want to you know, have a, a deeper conversation with us, and we are seeing some effects in terms of different packages this year. A lot of people are talking vocally about the importance of leaning into ESG and continuing to be uh, to put an emphasis on it, and yet behind closed doors, people are investing that much more in fossil fuels. You have even Germany investing in coal once again in order to try to fortify the nation ahead of potentially a disruption in the energy system. Do you get any more pushback now than perhaps a year ago? Well, there are a couple of things here. So what we're seeing with in the energy market now is that in the short term, there is uh, it's bad news for the climate because there is more coal production and so on. But longer term, I do think that the crisis we're seeing now will accelerate the move into renewable infrastructure uh, and renewable energy. So I do think longer term there is a there is a positive development. Now then you have the whole thing about backlash against ESG and we think it's really really seriously bad. You know, we do we think that ESG that is just not politics. It's common sense. And taken to the extreme in an an inhabitable world, the value of our fund is zero, right? So it's clear that climate is important for financial assets. The other issue that people are talking about at Davos is a bipolar world, this idea of the West versus China and this question about rising tensions. Does that factor into any of your discussions with boards in terms of security issues in light of what happened with Russia, in light of the uh, invasion uh, of Ukraine? Is that also part of those kinds of ESG conversations? I don't think it's part of ESG as such. And I think that's probably a, a, an area where boards are doing, doing quite well is to think about uh, their supply chains. And, and so on. But, you know, clearly uh, 
a reversal of globalization is, is not great generally. A lot of investors who I've been speaking with, and I want to wrap up here, just are obsessed with central banks and what they're going to do next and whether they're going to raise by 25 basis points or 50 basis points. Do you track that? Is that something on your radar? Do you care about whether they drop too soon or they raise rates earlier? I mean, you have to care. But what, how do you factor that into what you do? Well, it's the, it's the very big uh, question for us. Uh, it's what will happen with, uh, with rates around the world. Uh, there is a risk that they will stay high uh, for longer. There is a risk that uh, when China comes back in, it could re-accelerate. I mean, these are risks that we look at and that we have to take into consideration. Do you traders trade every day? <laughs> uh, we, uh, we have a lot of rebalancing and trades. We got a lot of PMs. And so the answer is yes, we do, we do trade every day. I don't trade personally, <laughs> uh, but hey, 